<laughs> Hello, nerds. It's Hero from Nerdfeed. I'm here with Grego from Grego's Game Shows. Hello. <laughs> Grego has been producing and hosting game shows since 1999. His games are typically spin-offs of popular TV game shows, um, although he does have a few that he's created himself. Uh, the players are typically either convention attendees or the guests, and all of these games are gloriously, ner gloriously nerdy in their presentation. Um, what typically goes into preparing for a game show or set of game shows for well, the weekend? Uh, first of all, I take a look and see who the guests are. Mm -hmm. uh, I usually have the convention ask the guest beforehand if they would like to participate in one. Um, there are a whole lot of new. There's a whole lot of new talent. Uh, becoming convention guests, so I don't know everyone yet, so I leave it to the convention to ask. And then when they come back with a list of yeses, then I go from there. Uh, I have guest games that can utilize two, three, four, six, you know. And so I start there with the guest games, and we usually do those on Saturday. Then if it's a convention that I've done a lot, then uh, it really doesn't, if they like me, then it doesn't really matter which shows I do, so I tend to go with some more of my favorites to do. <laughs> but if it's a show that I'm doing for the first time or a region that don't know me very well, I'll tend to stick to more things that people know, like Jeopardy, mm -hmm. uh, if the con can handle it, something like Wheel of Fortune. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, something that if you look it on a schedule, you'll see, oh, I know what Jeopardy is, I'll go to something like that. For sure, rather than it being like Grego's game shows and then no one having no idea what And no one is this, yeah. Uh, and the worst part is when I'm doing one of those obscure games and the convention doesn't put Grego's game shows on there and just puts the name of a thing and people are like, what the heck is that? And then no one goes. And no one goes. It's sad. Uh, <laughs> it hardly ever happens, but it does happen. Uh, mm -hmm. And then as far as the rest of the prep goes, once I know what shows I'm doing, um, sometimes I'll recycle some material from one show to another if it's in different regions of the country where I don't suspect there'll be anyone in this audience who was in this audience. And they're like a week away from each other. Mm -hmm. for yeah. Sure. And then uh, for other, yeah, if we haven't put it on YouTube yet, then it's free game for that sort of uh, repetition. I did one here this weekend that's uh, a repeat. It was, uh, just simply because if I can get away with writing material for two games, those two games will be better. And then if I can recycle those two games at another show, then at that show I can write two other games that will be really good for that show. So it's constant good quality for that. Absolutely. And I typically write all my material the day of the show. Um, I can only write in the morning, so I wake up really early and oh. do all the material. So usually I go to bed really early too, because again, old. Um, but that way all the material is fresh in my head and uh, is, and I can write topical stuff, like if something was announced the day before, for example, then on Saturday I can ask that as a question. And then if the convention guests were paying attention, you know, we went to the panel, it's like, oh, I know that because I heard that at the panel yesterday, and so on. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do you film all of your uh, game shows? Not all of them. Uh, like, for example, um, I do a Pokemon game, but Pokemon Company International are very generous in allowing me to do that. Thank you. <laughs> so. Uh, as, a, as an attempt not to overstep my bounds, we rarely film that one. Mm -hmm. uh, I do another Pokemon game that I don't call Pokemon, but is about Pokemon, and we do film that one. Um, and then any guest game I tend to film, unless it's a, unless I've me I'm meeting all of the guests for the first time and we haven't really had a chance to, to talk, and then I won't film it the first time, but then the next time I see those guests, then they're generally okay. And then if I'm recycling a game and the last one we filmed was great, then obviously I'm not going to put up the same show with the same material. So, so we tend not to. This convention, um, we did Pokemon on Friday. That wasn't filmed. Today was a recycled show. That wasn't filmed. Uh, Saturday, though, we filmed both of those. And we did one live for the first time. Uh, anyone uh, with uh, uh, iOS uh, device, there's an app called Unlocked. We talked with David about that. Yeah, yesterday. so there you go. Um, I hosted a live game show on Unlocked yesterday, and we had a pretty good turnout for it online, so that was really exciting. Mm -hmm. And the good news is it says uh, David said that it should be available for Android. Android in like soon. Eight weeks. Yeah, That's Android it. soon. And uh, I'll actually be uh, from my home studio, actually doing some game shows from home. Uh, streaming that, and people? streaming them on, on, on Unlocked will be able, they have the capacity to do live game shows. Oh my god. Yeah, so that'll be a thing that happens. It'll be kind of, you know those trivia apps out right now, like HQ yeah. and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. It's going to be something similar to that, only themed to anime. Gotcha. So, 
uh, and more information when it becomes available, but it's a thing that will be happening. So. That is going to be super Yeah, follow Grego on Unlocked if you don't already. So. I need to get Unlocked. I've heard so much about it this weekend, and I don't have it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, what, out of all the games that you have hosted, not a specific, not at a specific convention with a specific group of people, but in general, what is your favorite game to host? Um, any game where the audience gets it. Um, like, even if it's something that they've never seen before, if it's one of my original games, uh, a good example, one of my original game shows is called Farkle, and it's based off of that dice game where you roll six dice and then try to score off of it. My I, mom made me giant uh -huh, cubes uh -huh. with Farkle. I actually created a game show around that game. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. And uh, if you don't, if you aren't now, you're familiar with it, but if the average person isn't familiar with, sort of. with it, <laughs> uh, you can generally tell the first part of the game, the audience is kind of like, but then when it gets about two or three questions in, you start to get the reaction from them. And then by about halfway through, they're rooting and cheering whenever the dice come up a certain way. And, oh, this player's almost out of the game. But at the very last second, a dice come, one of the dice comes up and it saves them and so on and so forth. Uh, anytime the audience gets it and good reaction. If I, any show where I don't have to use all of my ability to try to get some... Reaction. reaction where I can just you know lay back and be myself Absolutely. and then the audience is you know is getting Coming it so you. they're yeah that though and this this convention that happened everywhere I mean <laughs> yeah weird. yeah that was it was uh, I had really great audiences this weekend mm -hmm. so but yeah never a specific show it could be any show really um, where it's like that even jeopardy which I hate doing uh, occasionally a category or a contestant will just really catch the audience uh, and it goes really well uh, and turns a show that I hated spending eight hours preparing <laughs> into a really memorable show that I walk away from and go that was really fun. Is that uh, why you don't like Jeopardy? Because it takes so much preparation. <laughs> well uh, trivia is not really something that I love doing unless I can put a twist into the trivia so that it's fun for me to write and uh, with something like a Jeopardy clue, um, a good Jeopardy clue puts the answer in there if you think about it. And so it's basically spoon feeding the answers in the questions themselves. <laughs> um, and it's just, it's, it's really formulaic and kind of boring. Uh, Farkle is good because all the questions have a twist. It's all multiple choice, so I'll put three answers up on the board, but then I'll ask a question that goes completely sideways. So I could list three Dragon Ball characters, but then ask a question about Cardcaptor Sakura, where one of the answers happens to also be correct for that. So uh, those are really fun to write, put together. Because so it throws people it off. It throws people off, and that really gets them into it, and it's fun for me to make uh, a show like that. So. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so that's why I typically don't like doing just straight trivia like Jeopardy or something like that. So, and there's enough other people that do Jeopardy at cons that I'm more than happy to let them have it. <laughs> of so. course. <laughs> but um, for your favorite game show, it's not necessarily a specific game. It's just the yeah. fact that whether or not you have an active audience. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because it makes me feel like I'm doing this in the right way. Because, I mean, I do this to give convention attendees a way to be engaged in something that's not the typical, you know, guest panel or vendor room or video game room or the things that you typically do at these things. For sure. And uh, to give them uh, an experience that they come away from having experienced something that was really fun and keeps and gets them up and, you know, they really enjoyed that particular thing and it gives them a good impression of the convention in general uh, and it keeps them, you know, active and, and happy and entertained and such. Mm -hmm. So anytime I walk away from a game show and I'm positive that that happened, that was the best game show that I've ever done. Uh, and then the next time it happens, that was the best game show that I've ever done, et cetera. That was a better answer than anything I was expecting. <laughs> I was expecting you to be like, oh, this game, because I really like this game. <laughs> so, yeah. Tipping my hat to you for that. <laughs> uh, is there any specific convention that you've always wanted to go to and host at that you haven't had the opportunity to yet? No. <laughs> I've, you've gotten I've, offers from I've, I've, I have done. Uh, I have done everything as far as that goes, and it's it's uh, it's kind of dark when I say that because it's kind of like, well, We're done that now. is done. Uh, but no, I've 
I've uh, I've been to Canada. I've done shows up there. I've been to France. Uh, so I've done shows out there. Uh, I would like to do game shows in the UK, but I understand that that's probably impossible, uh, just because most UK conventions are. Uh, the panelists pay their own way in, they do their own panels, mm -hmm. and, to, and to ask for anything more than that is almost rude to that particular uh, country's way of doing conventions. So it's probably never going to happen. Uh, that's pretty much what's left on the bucket list. I've done game shows in every city that ever did a game show, like on television, like I've done game shows in LA, uh, I've done. I've been close enough to New York to call it good. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've Crunchyroll Expo would be nice, <laughs> but uh... if you had a big enough fan base in UK that wanted you to come out and fundraised for you to come out to specific convention, would you take them up on that offer? I mean, yeah. I... I have a Patreon that people contribute to that I never feel bad when they do because it, it, it definitely and helps like, out. Take you know? my money. <laughs> I mean, if, if people want to support me, I will let them. Absolutely. So, yeah. And then you could go to the UK for a convention. Yeah, I mean, if I do go to the UK, it'll probably just be to go. But if I ever did, I mean, that would be great because many of the game shows that I do are UK game shows. Mm -hmm. And some are UK exclusive game shows. So. It'd be nice to do to do one that would be appreciated in the UK mm -hmm. more than it's appreciated here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were to get the opportunity to host a weekly game show on television, would you take it? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, I perform for live audiences at conventions, and the closest I'll ever want to get to something like that will be the stuff on Unlocked because I know that that's my target audience, and I know I don't have to be fake or superficial. I can write and perform to people who are my people. Um, as far as television goes, I have a face for radio, so uh, I just, and I almost had a chance to do this um, about 15 years ago when the Anime Network was a fledgling uh, on-demand uh, thing that mm -hmm. wanted to go to an actual bona fide cable network like 24-7 yeah. with original programming. They were prepared to tap me to do game shows for them, but then with the fall of ADV Films, that never happened. So sure. uh, in the time between then and now, I kind of think it was a blessing in disguise because I really really do not want to be part of the business as far as television goes. I really enjoy what I do and who I do it for, and I kind of want to keep doing it that way and just figuring out a way to make it work for me so that I can keep doing it. Yeah, and it would be pretty terrible to start doing that and have the, the producers of the show or whatever be like, we can get our ratings up if you don't do this, and Plus, then you do do this. Plus, I mean, let's be honest. It's television. It's Hollywood. I'm not the person that they would choose to host whatever. You know, I mean, they maybe now if, if they like Farkle and they want to buy it as a format, I will take their money gladly. And then whoever <laughs> they want to have host it, that's fine by me. Um, but yeah, I television is not a gig I want to get into. I am more than happy to let people let the people who do television continue to do television, and I will continue to do my live shows for conventions and unlocked and online and such like that. Mm -hmm. What would be your ideal game show and uh, lineup to host? So, the the game that you would play, the convention it would be at, the guests that you would have, all of it. Like all right. Perfect. So, ideally, the perfect storm: um, two guest games, one that I would really enjoy just from a writing standpoint. So, probably uh, something like uh, Password, which I tend to do a lot, and then one where the guests can just go crazy and do their thing. So like match game, for example, for that. And the guests would be the, the creme de la creme of who I've had over the years. Um, obviously, Tiffany Grant's going to be somewhere on the match game panel <laughs> because that's her show. She's the queen of match game. Um, and then the other shows would be stuff that I want to really have fun writing, like the Scrabble that I did today, uh, Friday, uh, was a lot of fun to prepare. 
They got to write a whole bunch of dad jokes in, in, in crossword puzzle clue form, and that was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, stuff like that. So uh, any like, it'd probably be uh, Farkle, and then Scrabble, and then a couple of guest games, and then one just for the heck of it, just to blow everything out of the water, something huge and sparkly and shiny that everyone loves, something like Wheel of Fortune would be perfect for something like that. As far as where, um, honestly, uh, probably back in West Virginia at Sabasa Con. I mean, that's the con uh, I've done. Uh, this will be my 11th, uh, 10th consecutive year doing Tsubasa Con. It was the very first con that I did when I came back from about a two-year hiatus from doing conventions. And the fan base there just really appreciates what I've what I've been able to accomplish over the years. So probably that lineup at Tsubasacon. So there you go. That sounds like a pretty fun lineup. Mm. Um, do you have any social media sites you want people to follow? Absolutely. If you Google Grego's Game Shows, I'm like the first seven pages. But specifically, <laughs> it's Grego's Game Shows on Facebook, on Instagram, on uh, uh Twitch and on YouTube. It's Grego Game Shows. Thank you, 14 character limit on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> and on Unlocked, it's just simply Grego. Uh, and my Patreon is also Grego's Game Shows. I could use a couple more patrons, but mainly be a fan, enjoy the, enjoy the stuff, and uh, that's really all I ask. Send them so. to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> you can also follow Nerdfeed on all of our social media sites YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, our website, everything else that we've got out there. We do have the Bureau now. If you want to check that out, it's Nerdfeed Official. Nerdfeed. Just Nerdfeed. Oh, Bureau's still a thing? Bureau is still a thing. I heard there's something with it. So if it doesn't become a thing, don't check us out. <laughs> Go look at it. Uh, and if you, yeah, if you like our stuff, check out more for more nerdy news. Bye, guys. Thanks, Hero. Thanks so much, guys.